Hello, and thank you for joining us. This is No Sound Bites Allowed, and I am your host, Michael Boss, Dragon of the Southern Tier. I'm happy to be here with you today, June 2nd of 2022. It's Thursday, and Joe Biden has just spoken to the American nation. Democrats are in Congress, and they are trying to pass bills that will do something. And we are five months away from the 2022 midterm election. Are these things connected? Yes. How are they connected, and how will they affect your ability to protect yourself and your family, and what lesson, what message will be sent out to the rest of the world? Well, we're going to discuss that in just a moment. But first, we do want to mention to you that if this is the first time that you are seeing our channel, we thank you, we welcome you, and we want you to know that we do long-form political commentary. And every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we do a live stream with you. We reach out on all the social media that the internet overlords will allow. Be able to hear your voice, to hear what you have to say in chats and tweets and phone calls, because we believe in the First Amendment. We believe in your right to free speech. It's not just an American ideal. Whether your government agrees, whether the internet, internet overlords like it or not, we want to hear your voice on the issues that affect us all and we hope you will join us this Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard. America came back from the Memorial Day holiday, and we're still sad. We're sad because of the loss of life that we saw in Texas, as well as those we've seen in Buffalo, those we have seen in the New York City subways, and across this nation in Chicago, Baltimore, well, so many places. Americans across the nation are saying, do something. It's the worst possible thing that we could say. It is an emotional reaction that is absolutely natural. Do something. And Democrats are trying to take America's attention away from a bad economy, a bad proxy war. They want to take America's attention away from all the problems that are happening and have been happening for the last year and a half. And they're doing this because they want to win the 2022 midterm election. Not necessarily to help Americans, but to advance their political position. You may doubt that, but let's have that conversation. Let's make sure of where the Democrats stand and what are they really trying to achieve. Because it seems that Joe Biden is taking an approach very similar to Beto O'Rourke, the fake Hispanic in Texas, and trying to make sure that Americans are emotionally manipulated for the advantage of those elections. Let me show you what I mean. First of all, let's take a look and get this in context. You may recall that recently, as reported by the Daily Mail and other news stations, including NBC News, that Joe Biden is furious because his aides, the members of the White House staff, they keep correcting what he says. We've seen that with the press secretary for the White House. They correct, they reinterpret, they re-explain what it is that Joe Biden is saying. And Joe Biden is angered by this because he thinks this is taking away from his reputation, that this is somehow causing him to be seen worse than he actually is. But I don't think Joe Biden's actually heard himself speak. I mean, there's many things that he said that don't make any sense. I mean, think about what he said about Afghanistan, that no Americans were left behind. And then we found out 100 were left behind. And then 85, 6, 99. The number has changed month by month, and now he won't even mention Afghanistan at all. Not because all the Americans are home, but because he doesn't want to be caught in that lie. Remember what he said about the Ukraine, that he knew what Russia was going to do. He knew everything that, that Vladimir Putin would try and that he had a plan. And yet we have not seen the plan and Ukraine is no better off. We've heard Joe Biden say that there's going to be a food shortage coming in the fall and we don't have a plan. We were told that the southern border was being taken care of and he had it under control, it was okay. And now we have five times as many people entering the United States than in the previous two years, including 
four terrorists that entered the United States, at least four that we know of because they were caught. So when we see that, as reported by NBC, and I quote, Biden was furious that his remarks were being seen as unreliable, arguing that he's speaking genuinely and reminding his staff that he's the one who's president. Well, why would anyone question if he's president other than the fact that he doesn't act presidential and that no one understands what he's saying and the things that he has said have been conflicting with the truth? Another example, speaking about gun control, is that Joe Biden loves to say that the Second Amendment would not allow you to buy a cannon, and it never has, and that is a lie. He said that it wouldn't allow individuals to buy multi-barrel firearms. That is a lie. It's been fact-checked by the far left itself. It isn't true, but yet he keeps saying it. And his staff have to keep correcting him. In fact, uh, we can see that most recently, Joe Biden was very upset because the White House, once again on June 1st, had to come and correct what he was saying about handguns and to ensure, confirm to the American people that he isn't going to do what the Prime Minister of Canada, Trudeau, has done in stopping all handgun sales in the nation. Something that people believed because Joe Biden, well, he made some statements about handguns, 9 millimeter handguns, again, as he did in CNN Town Hall last year in 2021, he again attacked 9 millimeter handguns and equated them in the same way that Democrats equate assault weapons, assault rifles, or in other words, a semi-automatic rifle. And in fact, the question that came to the press secretary was, does Joe Biden support a ban on the sale of all handguns? Asked by Peter Ducey, Canada is making it impossible to buy, sell, transfer, or import handguns anywhere in the country. Would Joe Biden ever consider a similar restriction on handguns? The reason why she, he was asked that is because Joe Biden had said, quote, doctors said a 22 caliber bullet will lodge in the lung and we can probably get it out, may be able to get it and save the life. A 9 millimeter bullet blows the lung out of the body. That is a lie. That may happen in Hollywood when you're watching a movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger, but that's not reality. He goes on to say, so the idea of these high caliber weapons is uh, there's simply no rational basis for it in terms of thinking about self-protection and hunting. Well, let's get this right. A 9mm handgun is not a high caliber firearm. That is a fact. That's why police use this across the nation. It is not a high caliber weapon. It isn't a Hollywood movie. And there is a rational basis for having a 9mm handgun for self protection. A 5 foot tall woman versus a 6'2, 280 pound assailant, yes. There is a rational reason for it, and it has nothing to do with hunting. Because the Second Amendment has nothing to do with hunting. It never has. It has nothing to do with sports. It never had anything to do with sports. And Joe Biden, we think, knows that. But he's trying to demonize 9mm handguns. He's trying to demonize guns, and he's trying to demonize gun owners. 165 million Americans, including over 7.5 million new gun owners that happen to be 50% women and 40% black. Why would Joe Biden say all that? Because Joe Biden has a problem. Joe Biden needs to win an election. He needs to get his approval rating up. He needs to be seen as if he is doing something effective, that he's doing something efficient. But instead, Joe Biden took a different path, as we can see tonight when he was speaking to the nation, as reported by C-SPAN, on June 2nd. Memorial Day this past Monday, Bill and I visited Arlington National Cemetery. As we entered those hallowed grounds, we saw rows and rows of crosses, among the rows of headstones and other emblems of belief 
honoring those who paid the ultimate price on battlefields around the world. The day before, you visited Uvalde, Uvalde, Texas. In front of Robb Elementary School, we stood before 21 crosses, 19 third and fourth graders. What does the shooting in Uvalde, Texas have to do with Memorial Day? Nothing. It's about emotion. He has now set up the emotion that you're supposed to feel. He is trying to use those children to put an image in your mind alongside soldiers to make you think of war and warfare and that there is a war going on between mass shooters and school shooters and the American people, which isn't accurate. This is a game. This is meant to try and put a picture in your head so your emotions will fall in line with his goals. Let's go on. Two teachers. On each cross, a name. And nearby, a photo of each victim that Jill and I reached out to touch. Innocent victim, murdered in a classroom, been turned into a killing field. Standing there in that small town, like so many other communities across America, I couldn't help but think, there are too many other schools, too many other everyday places. In fact, if you look at the data, as has been done by Professor Allen, uh, James Allen Fox out of Northeastern University, we know that over the last four decades, the number of mass shootings has been consistent. It hasn't really gone up, hasn't really gone down. It stayed about the same at about 20 mass shootings per year with about 100 individuals wounded or killed. That's a fact. Now, the media likes to hype certain stories. They like to try and change the numbers, but the fact is the numbers haven't changed. And yes, you can say even one is too many, but that's not the same thing as trying to make us feel like this is a war field like this is an active war zone, and to make it similar to feel like it's Memorial Day, like those who have fought in wars for the United States and lost their life. It's not the same thing. Let's go on. Become killing field, battle here in America. So at such a place just 12 days before, across from a grocery store in Buffalo, New York, memorializing 10 fellow Americans spouse, parent, a grandparent, sibling, gone forever. Both places spent hours, hundreds of family members, broken. Joe Biden didn't go to Wakusha. Joe Biden didn't go to Chicago or Baltimore. He didn't go to St. Louis. He didn't go to California or New York. There's a lot of places he hasn't gone to that have issues just like what we've seen and the ones that he is mentioning because they serve an agenda. But these horrible events are being selectively used. Only some of the stories are being talked about. See, Joe Biden wants to tell you about ghost guns. Go, Joe Biden wants to tell you about mass shootings and he wants to talk about school shootings and he wants you to think that guns are the problem. Except none of these had, none of these cases were ghost guns. In fact, that's almost non-existent in America, in American crime. More importantly, he wants you to feel like this is something that he has an answer to, that it's a solution, and it's just get rid of the guns. In fact, this is what he's about to say. Lives will never be the same. They had one message for all of us. Do something. Just do something. No. And I'm going to stop right there. The answer, the question is not do something. It is neither a question nor an answer. Do something is the worst thing you could possibly say. And we covered that. We covered that back on May 31st. On May 31st, we made it very clear. Do something is the excuse. It's the escape. It is the way that politicians are able to manipulate the public. Do something. No. Do something effective. Do something efficient. 
do something that affects criminals and the criminally deranged. That is not, those four things are not the same as do something because Democrats have done things. They have done things after Columbine. They have done things after San Bernardino, after the uh, Florida shooting. We've seen them do things and what they have done is the same thing. They passed the New York Safe Act. They passed magazine bans. They passed various gun bans. They've passed red flag laws. They passed ghost guns. They've increased background checks. They've done things, all the same thing. They have reduced the ability of American citizens to be able to be armed, to exercise their Second Amendment right. They've done that. And criminals don't care. Criminals have not been stopped. The deranged have not been stopped. None of that answers what causes a person to decide that the only answer that they have is to kill innocent people. None of the ban, gun bans, none of the magazine bans, the New York Safe Act, the red flag laws, nothing answers that question. As we highlighted on May 31st, and when you don't answer that question, you don't stop the crime. That is a fact. It is irrefutable. But Joe Biden wants you to think that that is the case. And he wants to tell you that children are dying, that they are dying because of gun violence. Except going to the CDC and double checking, fact checking Joe Biden's speech when he says that the leading cause for children are guns. Well, according to the CDC, that's not true. According to the CDC, the children, leading causes of death from 1 to 14 are accidents. Secondary would be cancer. That's not guns. Those aren't the leading causes of death, as Joe Biden has incorrectly told the public. Because Joe Biden wants your emotion. He wants you to feel a certain way because he wants to push through an idea. He wants to push through a ghost gun ban. He wants to push through a red flag law. He wants to push through regulations that Democrats in Congress are right now fighting on, like H.R. 7910, otherwise known as the Protect the Children Act. And we're going to go through that for you. And this is a falsehood. This is not in your best interest. In fact, let's go to see what CNN, CNN, one of the biggest cheerleaders of the Democratic Party, they came out with an article yesterday, June 1st. Florida's red flag law, championed by Republicans, is taking guns from thousands of people. Well, let's be very clear here. It isn't championed by Republicans, maybe some in Florida, but not across the nation, because red flag laws do not work. That is a fact. It isn't a question. It isn't even a guess. We've done the work for years. Red flag laws did not stop the shooter in Buffalo, as an example, in New York State, which has a red flag law since 2019. It did not protect people. And that is true everywhere across the nation. But CNN said in their article, that research suggests red flag, red flag laws, also known as ERPOs or Extreme Risk Protection Orders, have made a difference where they've been implemented. One analysis of Connecticut's red flag law, in place since 1999, found that for every 10 to 20 guns removed by, by the ERPOs or red flag laws, led to one averted suicide. Well, here's the thing. Suicide isn't mass shootings. They're not the same. Red flag laws, we were promised, would stop mass shootings. They don't. They don't stop school shootings. And in fact, they don't stop suicides either, and we'll prove that to you. They also mentioned that another study found intimate partner homicides dropped in states where authorities can prohibit people convicted of non specific violent misdemeanors from owning firearms. This is the core of what Joe Biden is trying to do. 
This is the core of what Democrats in Congress are trying to do right now. And I want to be very clear. They're doing this because they will have done something and therefore you should reelect them. And anyone who doesn't do something like the Democrats are, well, they're bad people. They want to see children dead. That would be the Republicans and you shouldn't vote for them. This is a game. This is about the midterm election. It has nothing to do with whether or not this would actually protect people. And I know this for a fact because I've done the homework. See, CNN is talking about two studies. I've actually looked through all of the information about red flag laws. I already have sources, over 150 sources on red flag laws. I've done an 8,000 word report on red flag flag laws back in 2018 and nothing has changed because every single red flag law in the United States is based on the same exact structure. The very same structure that I was talking to New York State about when I did this report and I looked through all the sources across the United States and the information hasn't changed. You see, CNN told you that, well, there's a study. Actually, I know what study it is. It's a study by Duke University. That's the study they're talking about. And if you go into that study, and if you look at page 191 on risk-based gun removal laws, and actually look at the study that they're talking about, about red flag laws, you'll see that it says almost 92% of gun removal subjects were male. Almost everybody that red flag laws target and have been targeting since 1999 are male. Of those whose marital status is known and reported, 81% were married or cohabitating. That isn't normal for a mass shooter or a school shooter. That doesn't fit the pattern going on. 5% were military veterans, which doesn't fit the pattern going on. Subjects ranged across the adult age spectrum with an average of 47 years at the time of gun removal. The average age for someone who is committing a mass shooting is approximately 25. The average age of someone doing a school shooting is about 21. There are cases younger. There are cases older. They are nowhere near 40. 47-year-olds do not, in general, commit mass shootings. It is uncommon. That isn't the pattern. Red flag laws, by their creation, by their structure, by their function, they do not target mass shooters, or nor do they target school shooters. That is a fact. That is actually what Duke University's results were showing. It's something that you could only know if you've actually read the research, you read all about this, and actually quoted it properly, as we did in 2018 that CNN conveniently left out. They didn't even link to the actual study because they didn't want you to read it. They didn't want you to know the truth. We do. And in fact, if you go to page 202, This is all an estimate, by the way. There is no fact. There is no actual study that is exactly correct, that they have a definitive number that where red flags have protected people. In the study, if you actually read the study on page 202, you will see that the red flag laws say, in fact, and I am quoting here, the result was used in turn to create a counterfactual hypothesis. I guess, to estimate the number of excess fatalities that could have been expected in the absence of the gun seizure, the red flag action, and then, and then the number of gun seizure cases needed to prevent one suicide. The result for the latter was approximately 20. They are guessing, based on the data that they've done, they're making a guess that if you took 20 guns from American citizens, Maybe one of them would not commit suicide. That's a pretty miserable number. But by the way, 
That's not what was reported by CNN. They said 10 to 20. That isn't correct. The study actually says 20. There isn't 10 to 20, it's 20. They're lying to you because they want you to think it's something that they can do. It's easy to do, that they can prevent these suicides. Red flag laws do not. And the very study that they are quoting, I have already done the research on. They're lying to you. That means that 19 other Americans had their firearms taken away from them without any effectiveness, without any efficiency. It did not help them. It did not stop anything. According to the study itself, 19 out of 20 times, red flag laws do not stop suicides and they don't stop mass shootings at all. They don't stop school shootings at all. They're not built for that. That is a fact. It's very upsetting because you're being misled. And CNN also quoted another study, which is the analysis of strength of legal firearms restrictions for perpetrators of domestic violence and their associated associations with intimate partners homicide. Now, I would love to read this. This is from the National Library of Medicine, but they don't provide the actual document. But looking at the abstract, what I can tell you is, based on the results of a series of robust negative binomial regression models, this is a guess with stated fixed effects, domestic violence restraining order, firearm prohibitions laws were associated with 10% reductions in IPH and in terms of intimate partner homicides. This is their estimate. This is their guess. This is what they're saying here. And the key here is, and this is the part that is being quoted by CNN, laws prohibiting access to those convicted of nonspecific violent misdemeanors were associated with 23% reductions in IPH rates. There was no association when prohibitions were limited to domestic violence. So this, this study doesn't work on domestic violence. This is about nonspecific misdemeanors. What is a misdemeanor? A misdemeanor, an example of a misdemeanor, which is different in every state, but common examples would include simple assault, you got in a fight, or disorderly conduct. Disorderly conduct is vague at best. It could be anything. Not wearing a mask during the pandemic restrictions is disorderly conduct. Almost anything could be a non-specific misdemeanor. This isn't telling you that this is effective. It isn't, nor has it ever been effective. But the media is trying to give you an emotion. They want you to feel a certain way about these things. And I'm breaking it down for you because I want you to understand that when Joe Biden is saying we need a national red flag law, he's basing it on information he hasn't even looked at. Information that is tailored to try and get you to believe it is more effective than it actually is. Suicides have not gone down in any state. Any of the 19 states that have had red flag laws has not experienced a reduction in suicides ever. There is no statistical evidence that it actually works. And we know that according to the study from Duke University quoted by CNN, it's only effective 19 out of 20 times. It's ineffective. It fails. It isn't efficient. It's a bad law. And that's not even talking about the fact that it destroys your due process, that it punishes people for non-crimes, that it can be initiated by individuals because they just don't like you. Or as CNN was mentioning, because you committed a misdemeanor. And Democrats are counting on the fact that you don't know any of this information, that no one is bothering to stop and to tell you this information so that they can make you feel like this will protect children, that these children will be protected, except the children, in fact, looking at Buffalo, looking at what happened in um, Texas, looking at many of the cases across this nation, the shooters weren't 47, 
They weren't married. But Democrats aren't stopping there because they're doing a one-two punch on this because they want to make sure that they're going to win the next election. That's why they have introduced H.R. 7910. This is the Protecting Our Kids Act. Protecting Our Kids Act. And I want you to stop and think about that for a second. Why did they name it Protecting Our Kids? Because this is how it's referred to in all of the news media. The Protecting Our Kids Act. Very simply, Democrats want to be able to say, a Republican didn't vote to protect our kids. If you don't vote for this, you're not protecting our kids. It is a campaign slogan. Doesn't matter if it's effective or not. Doesn't matter if it's actually going to protect children or not. It is so that they can say in their campaign ads, you voted against protecting our kids. That's why it's called Protecting Our Kids Act. That is the absolute fact. It is that political. This is being introduced by Jerry Nadler and, of course, one of our favorite individuals, an individual who actually despises the Second Amendment, Representative Sheila Jackson Lee. You may recall Sheila Jackson Lee. She's the same woman who says that an AR-15 weighs the same as 10 boxes and fires a 50 caliber round. Those are lies. None of that is true. Ten-year-olds, you can go to YouTube right now and search for a YouTube video on 10-year-olds firing the AR-15, and you will find it. Let's understand who is putting this out and why Jerry Nadler is in a battle for his election district because now that a, a fair and unbiased congressional district has been made, he is in trouble of losing his cushy position in Congress. So he pushed this bill. Now, what does this bill actually say? What is the Protecting Kids Act, or H.R. 7910? What is it? It will raise the age of those being able to own a firearm. Does that stop criminals? Again, this is it right here. Section 1, raising the age limit for those who are able to buy firearms to the age of 21. Does that protect anyone? No. Because criminals and deranged individuals will go out and they will get the firearms anyway. In fact, even if they can't, they will build bombs. We saw that in Islamburg. We saw that in Columbine. We've seen that in San Bernardino. These criminals will find other ways. In fact, we've seen them use vehicles like in Wakusha like in Manhattan, like in Las Vegas. The fact is, being 21 does not make people safe. That isn't a factor that will prevent criminals from continuing to commit crimes. Look at the average age of individuals committing crimes in Chicago, Baltimore, so many other places across this nation. That isn't a factor that will protect you. So, that's useless. What about the next thing? Preventing gun trafficking. That's section two. Prohibiting individuals to buy a gun illegally. In other words, to buy a gun so that they can sell it to another person illegally. That's already a crime. That's already a crime. That's already illegal, especially in various states and across the nation. So that doesn't prevent anything. Preventing gun trafficking. We already have laws on that. And it isn't working. That's not useful. Let's go to the next one. Untraceable firearms. In other words, ghost guns. This is useless. The majority of firearms that are used in violent crimes are not ghost guns. The, the number, the percentage of ghost guns that are used is so low that the FBI doesn't even count it as a category on its own. We have covered this many times. It is not a factor. It doesn't prevent anyone from using it. Look at Texas. That wasn't a ghost gun. Look at the New York subway shooter. That wasn't a ghost gun. Look at Wakusha, where an individual used a car. Las Vegas, they used a car. In Manhattan, they used a pickup truck. This isn't protecting anyone. Okay, how about safe storage? I'm going to come back to that. <clears throat> I'm going to come back to safe storage. 
because I want to show you the bill so that you can see how ineffective this is. But the last one is also making sure that you can't get a bump stock. Who's worried about a bump stock? Who had a bump stock? Was there one in Texas? Was there one in New York, whether it be in Buffalo or the New York subway? Where, were, where was anyone using a bump stock? They're not. It's not a factor. That's not what's going to make you safe. And large capacity magazines. There's the other one. Large capacity magazines. That's one of the big problems. You can't have a large magazine, a magazine that holds 10 or more bullets. That's large capacity. No, it's not. And again, criminals don't care. That's not going to make you safe. Uh, and I want to go back to this section because I think it really stands out amongst all the others. A and I think this section deserves a little more attention. Title four, safe storage. See, this is the stuff that the news media doesn't want to let you know how to find this. The news media won't discuss this in detail. Politicians absolutely will not discuss this in detail. They do not want you to see this because if you do, you will say this is useless. So to protect children in schools, again, to protect children in schools, Democrats are suggesting Ethan's law, which in general says that if you have someone who is under the age of 21 or is someone who can access a firearm, you must lock up that firearm. You have to put it away. You got to put it in a gun safe or somewhere that the children or anyone else cannot get to. How does that make you safe? Because if they do get to it, or if they get to another firearm, or if they make a bomb, that you're not making anyone safe. If they legally are able to buy the gun, that doesn't make you safe. So that's useless. Uh, I will ask yet another question about this. Okay, you, you have a gun, you have a firearm, and the government says, well, you have to make sure that you store it safely. How do they know? How would they know? They said, well, we're going to charge you $500 for the first time if you make this offense, that you're going to be charged. If you don't store it properly, we're going to charge you $500. How will they know? Without coming into your home to check, how would the government know if you safely stored it or not? They wouldn't. They wouldn't know until after an event. If someone steals your firearm or uses your firearm to commit a crime, then they would find out that you didn't store it safely enough and they would charge you $500. It would be a crime. You can get a year in jail. According to this bill, HR 7910, after the fact, it's useless. It doesn't protect you, but it will punish someone after the fact after a crime has been committed. And the only way they could protect you beforehand is that the government would have to come to your home, find out where you're storing your firearms, and to be able to inspect it, which means they violate your Fourth Amendment right, your right to privacy. And again, we're taking away the emotion. I understand it's meant to protect our kids. I know they want you to feel like this is, they're doing something. The problem isn't the age, it is the action. Why is someone deciding that the only answer they have in life is to kill innocent individuals and children? That's the question. That's the core issue. Why are they doing that? And we are looking at this, and their age has no impact on why they come to that decision. Ghost guns, not a factor. It is a negligible number of firearms across the United States. And this will not make it any more safe. You're losing more rights and freedoms than you're gaining, and you gain no safety. You can only have a magazine of 10 bullets or less, which is ridiculous. But what if they have the multiple magazines? What if they have multiple firearms? Well, if they shoot 10 times, and then they pick up another gun, and they shoot another 10 times, or they reload. Again, you're not made safe. This isn't stopping them. I hope I've made this clear. This is what is being offered right now to America. Under the guise of, you're going to be safe. We're going to protect children. Joe Biden just gave you this image, this message. 
that children are in a war zone in America. They are fighting against mass shooters and school shooters. And it's just like Memorial Day. Just like our soldiers we have sent around the world that have fought and protected America and died. These kids are in a war just like that. That is the mental image he wants you to have. And he is saying that his solution is a ghost gun ban, a red flag order, and H.R. 7910. All of these brought to you by Democrats because they are doing something. Joe Biden is using you. Because those Democrats, Jerry Nadler, Representative Sheila Jackson Lee, and all so many other Democrats across this nation, they're going to tell you they're doing something. What they won't say is they're doing something effective. They're not going to tell you that they did something efficient. They're not going to tell you that they did something that actually protects children. Because they didn't answer the question, what makes someone decide that the only answer they have is to kill innocent children? We have been asking that question and covering this issue for 15 years. Democrats have never asked that question, and they don't have an answer to it. In fact, no one has an answer to it, to be honest. But they're definitely not trying to answer the question. They're just trying to take away your guns and to leave you unsafe. That's the reality. Perhaps you think that these items will protect you, even though no evidence exists of that. In fact, if there was any evidence of any of the gun laws anywhere in the nation that have actually protected schools and children, you would hear every single Democrat, every single politician that is up for an election, every candidate would be standing up and screaming that this actually works. Here are the numbers. They'd be telling you the stats all day long if they actually had any evidence. But they don't. That's why they won't tell you any evidence. They don't have any evidence. Instead, what we've seen is Joe Biden has done what Beto O'Rourke has done. He stood on the backs of dead children to try and push a political agenda that he wants his White House staff to not correct, to try and convince you that he's doing something, but not doing something effective. I'm not telling you who to vote for. That's up to you. But I am telling you, if you're going to vote for someone because they said they're going to protect children, make sure they're actually protecting children and not just using your emotions. That's what I have to say about it. But I look forward to hearing what you have to say. And we do hope to see you this Sunday at 2.30 p.m.